Hello and welcome to the second part of this series of videos on the Dirty Wave M8 entitled A Worked Example and like I said in the first video the best way to learn this device is to actually make some music on it so in the first video which was fairly long about 20 minutes I think I got as far as putting four kick drums in it sounds ridiculous to spend 20 minutes on that but of course I was going into a lot of detail about the, the sort of setting up of everything a bit involved but I like to really explain absolutely everything. I know I would have loved something like this when I was thinking about buying the M8, so hopefully I'm providing something that's gonna be useful to absolute beginners or would-be buyers of the device. So at the moment, if we go back to the song view, I'm gonna try and use this other view today using the, this Glyx patch on the original uh, M8 screen view by a guy called George Glyxner, very clever chap. And uh, I'm gonna use this view whereby if I press the the buttons you get a nice flash on the button I've still got the iPhone recording my fingers pressing the buttons so um, I might use a combination of the two so it's a bit of an experiment today but anyway if we go back to the song view by pressing shift and left at the moment we've got just one chain chain 10 so we've got our kick drum in now we're going to add a snare drum so we're going to create chain 20 on track 2 and then we're going to create four instances of phrase 20 inside that chain. So we're going to move over to track two and we're going to make a chain 20 on this. Just hold edit down, see the lights flashing there, and we're going to press the up button once, twice, and now we've got chain 20 on track two. Now if we go into chain 20 by pressing shift and right, at the moment, all the phrases are blank. We can have up to 16 phrases in a chain. You can see they go from naught to F. We're on naught at the moment. We're gonna hold edit and up once, twice. Now we've got phrase 20 in chain 20. See, so to keep it all in line, track two, chain 20, it's the two that's the common denominator there. Now the kick is the instrument 01, which is on track one. You now need to choose instrument 02 for track two. So if we go to phrase 20, okay, going into the, the view of the phrase. In the first video, I made a mistake here because I didn't put a note in here at first so that when I went to the sample for that kick drum, it was right down in the basement, sounded horrible, really deep and not very nice at all. So I'm not going to make that mistake here today. I'm going to put a note where I want it to go initially, which is going to be on step four. I'm just going to press edit and it's created a C4 on that step. Now, if I press play, you won't hear anything because there's no instrument assigned to this. Let's move over to the instrument and it says naught, naught. Right, naught, naught is the first instrument. I didn't use that for the kick drum. I used naught one. I'm going to use naught two on this. So I'm going to hold edit and write once. Now let's take in with your 01 and you heard the kick uh, come up there. Okay, you can hear that's playing. You can see it momentarily at the bottom there. Uh, but I'm going to go up another step to 02. So I held edit and the right button there. And now I'm on instrument 02. Now if I play this, nothing. There's no sound, if you like, assigned to that instrument. So how are we going to assign our snare drum to this instrument? Right, we're going to hold shift and right, and we're now in the instrument view. It says type none. Now that's no good, obviously, so I'm gonna hold edit and right once, twice, three times, and now I've got a sampler on that instrument. I still won't have any sound because I haven't loaded up a sample. Press right, go over to load, we're going to press edit to enter the load window edit is enter if you like or yes and we want the samples folder and press edit we're going to come down to packs edit and again we've got electronic sounds and splice so we're going to use the electronic sounds samples by my good buddy dean daughters from electronic sounds has provided all these excellent samples and uh, so we're going to come down to that enter now we want snares which are almost at the bottom again highlight it press edit we're actually going to use the first one in the list if i press play you can hear that snare drum being played and then as soon as i press edit it's going to load it into that uh, slot so now if i press play 
come over to the phase view and see every time the playhead reaches step four it plays that instrument number two which is that snare now let's come back to the instrument view because at the moment our work isn't quite done because we haven't named that sample it's in there you can see under sample it says snare one but the actual name of the sample is still blank and if you want to keep things really tidy it's a good idea to name it so with the cursor in the first space of the name hold edit not surprisingly we're going to call this a snare <laughs> not that exciting so we're going to come down to the third row and along the s oh went too far come back let go now the s is there press edit again so we're going to find the n which is along here find it let go it's in press the enter again come along and up one the a let go getting the idea then we're going to come down one along to the r let go, nearly there. We need the E, which is on the upper row there. E, and there it is, and that's done. So what have we done? We have loaded a snare sample into instrument two, and we've called it snare. And we've already put a note. If we go back to our phrase here by holding shift and left. We've already put a note on uh, step four, and the volume is 64, and the instrument is number two. Let's put that same sound on step C we're going to see if I press edit it will just bring up the same one that I've just entered so if I press play you'll hear we've got the snare drum twice in the bar in the classic place on two and four beat two beat four step four step C in M8 speak in hexadecimal speak now at the moment you can only hear the snare drum if you want to hear the bass drum as well, the kick drum, hold shift and play. Now you can hear them both. See? Because in the phrase view, you only really hear initially the, the sounds that are in that phrase. And that's quite a good thing, I think. We're going to do something a little bit more exciting now. We're going to put some reverb on the snare. We're going to make the snare sound like it's being played in a, in a huge space, like a church or a big hall. So we're going to go to the appropriate page for the snare and turn up the reverb level. So we're on the instrument view now for that snare we loaded in. We're going to come down, 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 and across to the reverb level. There it is, REV, and it's on naught, naught at the moment. Now, one thing you can do, and I'll show you this uh, actually using the uh, iPhone view. I'm just going to move my M8 a little bit to do this. With the cursor on rev on the reverb if i hold edit hopefully you'll be able to see this i can actually drag my finger across the screen and you can see the reverb going up and down as i go left and right so it's actually a touch screen as well it's pretty good isn't it what we're going to set it on that well this was the set it up fairly high press play it's a bit high isn't it let's bring it back a bit Whoa. There we are, 7, 7D, it's about halfway up. So we've added some reverb to our snare. It sounds a lot nicer, doesn't it? And you can, of course, edit it in the normal way with the edit uh, button and the left and right buttons on the actual M8 itself. I think a lot of people don't realise that the screen on the M8 is actually a touch screen and you can use it a bit like an iPad. You can obviously send different amounts of reverb to different steps in the phrase but at the moment we've added it globally to the whole instrument so if we go back to the phrase view you'll hear that both snares have got that reverb on because it's the instrument that's had the reverb added to it not the actual step in the phrase and that's a another level besides isn't it okay we've done quite a bit of work so we're going to save so to do that we've got to come across to at least the chain view go up to the project view now we need to come over to save so save is highlighted Press edit or enter if you like. Save to songs, yes. Overwrite existing song, yes. And now that is saved and we can carry on knowing that it's safely in our M8 and we're not gonna lose it. So we've got uh, two chains with two phrases and if we just press play, it's gonna loop round. Kick drum and snare drum with reverb on. Now it's worth mentioning that you can go to a different chain, phrase or instrument by holding option and then pressing left or right. So at the moment, I'm 
on chain 20 and playing the snare drum. Supposing I wanted to play the kick drum phrase, phrase 10, but didn't want to be bothered to go back to the other screen. Well, if you hold option, this one here, and left, you see, it's taking me back to chain 10. Now I can hear the kick drum. So if I hold option and right, it still plays the kick drum until I stop it, start it again. That's a handy little shortcut if you don't want to go all the way back to the beginning. You can only do this, by the way, uh, for chains and phrases that actually exist. You can't do it if those are empty. There's no undo at the moment on the M8, so be very careful about what you do. That's why it's a really good idea to, to save regularly. I don't know if you know how to get rid of things, but if you want to get rid of something, supposing I wanted to get rid of this phrase 20, if I hold Option and Edit together, that's now gone. So then press play, nothing. So luckily I've saved, so I'm gonna come up to the project view, come over to load, there's enter, lose changes, yes. And our song that we're working on is called Demo One. And press enter, and now that's loaded. And now we've got it back. So that's a great reason for saving regularly there, isn't it? Now in our chain 20, phrase 20, let's change our second snare drum to a different snare. This will be fun. So we'll come down to it and we're going to come over to the instrument. At the moment it says O2. So if I hold enter and write, move it up to O3, it says none. So now if I press the play button, first snare, but on the second one there's nothing. So we've got to assign the sample to it. So shift and write, go into instrument view, none. Edit and write, one, two, three times, go to sampler, over to load. Enter. Now, our list of snares has come up because that's where we were last. It's good, isn't it? Always remembers where you were last. But the snare I'm going to use is snare two, which is down here. I can audition it by pressing the play button. Quite like that. I'm using that because it's so different to the other snare. So press edit to load it in. Okay, now if I press play now, you can hear the two snares. Let's just go to the phrase view. See that in action. Instrument two, instrument three, two, three. Now, of course, the second snare drum is dry. It has no reverb on it. So instead of putting reverb on it, let's put some delay on it, shall we? So let's come back to the instrument view. And obviously, you've got to be on that actual step to do this. Otherwise, you won't get that instrument when you come across. So instrument view. B, edit. Very satisfying this. I do like these buttons. Uh, G. Oh, so slow this, sorry. Now I want a space here, so we come down, it's to the right of the Z. Now the space opened up, and then we're going to come across S and So big snare, so it's now named. Now we're going to come down to the delay, which is over on the right hand side. And it's saying a delay, no, no, I'm not going to use the touch screen this time. I'm simply going to use the edit button on the right, bring it up, bring the level up. Let's see what that's like. Yeah, it is there, but it's not very loud at the moment. Let's just bring it up a bit more. This is the amount we're sending out to the delay, the master delay. I'm gonna come down to the effects view by holding uh, the down and the shift. So mixer, pass that, takes me to the effects. And I want to alter the delay now at the moment the time is set to 30 left, 30 right. I'm going to bring that down to 10. So edit and down twice. Move over, edit and down twice. That's now 10, 10. And I'm going to set the feedback, that's the amount of repeats, to uh, B0, B0. So let's come down to that and use the up button. 
There we go. Now, press play. And I've got a much faster delay, and I think that would work better if I hold, shift and play together. That's quite nice, isn't it? You do get an awful lot of this pressing play to stop it, and then you think, oh, it's still going. That's because you've got to sometimes do it in two stages. So in our song, we've got two tracks, two chains. On track one, we've got the kick drum. On track two, we've got the snare drum. And because we've added that other snare drum, I'm just going to do a belt and braces thing here and save again. So come over, save, yes, yes, overwrite, yes. And now I know I'm good to go. Before we go on, the one thing I forgot to do was to create four instances of this phrase 20. So if I come down one position and press edit, it's gone to phrase 0, 0. I'm going to hold edit and up once, twice. Now I've got phrase 20, down, hold edit, down, edit. Now I've got four phrase 20s in chain 20. If I press option and go to the left, see I've got four phrase 10s in chain 10. Option right. So it's just keeping it nice and uniform. So we know we're going to get four bars of both at the moment looping because there's nothing else. So now we're going to create chain 30 on track three. So I'm going to hold edit and it's defaulted to 20 where I was last. So bring it up one to 30. Just to remind you, if you hold edit and up, it goes up in tens and down in tens. If you hold edit and down, you know, usual thing. If you want single increments, hold right and left. Yeah. So track three, chain 30, and we're going to go into chain 30 by holding shift and right. I'm just going to come up to the first position there, uh, the first uh, bar, if you like. If I press edit, it'll bring up 20 where we were last. So we want 30, so I'll hold edit and up. And this time I will remember to come down and create those four phrase 30s. They're empty at the moment in those four steps, naught, one, two, three. Right, so we've got chain 30, on track three, phrase 30 four times. Let's go into the phrase. We're going to have a hi-hat pattern here. Now, we're going to use something called fill here, which was something that was introduced not that long ago to the M8. I'm gonna show you how that works. So I'm not gonna make the same mistake that I made in my first lesson of uh, putting the notes in after I'd loaded in the sample. Right, so I'm going to press edit to enter in a, a note. Now at the moment it's defaulted to instrument 03, which is that second snare. Gonna come across to that and change that to instrument four, where there's nothing. We'll load that hi-hat sound into that in a moment. But I'm going to enter in these notes into this phrase, not by meticulously, laboriously, one at a time, but using something called fill. So how does fill work? Well, we've got our first note entered in. We can't hear it if I press play, there's nothing there. So we're going to press shift and option to highlight that first note. And then we're gonna press down to highlight the whole uh, column of notes there. Now we're gonna hold option and left to scroll through our fill options. So option and left. And you can see these changing here. We've got one times means that every single step is filled up with C4s. Two times is every other one. Okay, that's the one we're going to use, and there are other options like threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, all kind of weird things, eights. So there we are, back at one time. So we want two times, so this is going to give us a C4 note on every other beat, like a t -t -t feel exactly what we want. So that saves entering them in laboriously one at a time. So that's great, that saved an awful lot of time, isn't it? Now we're going to go to the instrument column, which come out of that. If you press option, it says copied selection, that doesn't matter. That's just to get out of, uh, of that view, don't want them all selected. Come across the instrument. Now 04, that's the right instrument because uh, 01 was the kick drum and 02 and 03 were the two snares. So 04 is the next one we want to use. Press shift and right to go into that. None, there's no instrument on that yet. So hold 
edit and write and we're going to come across to the sampler over to load and we're in snares we don't want snares we're going to come out of that by pressing shift and left and now we're back into the the folder that contains all of these we're going to come up to the hats here we are press edit here's our list of hats we're going to use hi-hat 10 audition it by pressing play like that that's fine we're going to press edit to load that in now when we press play you can hear we've got our hi-hat pattern come across to it and see the there it is it's brilliant isn't it i love it and we're on the steps 0 2 4 6 8 a c and e it's it's a typical quaver pattern one and two and three and four and now we're going to make it sound a little bit better by just changing the volume of every other instance so it's set at 64 which is a hundred out of 127 the 64 is a hexadecimal value so if we turn down every other one to 44 press edit and down twice down to this one edit and down twice and then miss the next one down to the next one edit and down twice and do the same on the last one here Edit and down twice now when we play it you've got that accent much better much more human if I hold shift and play it's really starting to come together now isn't it we've got the lovely kick drum the two different snares and we've got the hi-hat with a bit of a human feel to it tell you what I forgot to do <laughs> I forgot to name my hi-hat didn't I let's go into the uh, instrument view for this phrase yeah it says hat 10 in the sample but nothing in the names it's come across and call this hi-hats so imaginative with my naming. You can bring up a random name. Should we try that for fun? Let's call it Quantum Pine, which I don't want. <laughs> so we'll come back and we'll name it Hi-Hats. <laughs> I've got to get rid of all that now. So. so we're doing well. Got our Hi-Hats in. Now let's go to our song view. Just a reminder that on the right hand side of the song view, in fact all the views, you can see that information there. Of the, uh, the dots coming up where notes are sounding on the various tracks. Let's save, shall we? I always worry about this. So hold uh, shift and up. Save. Yes. Yes. Overwrite. And I'm back. Okay, we want to create a bit of a variation in the kick drum pattern so we're going to go into chain 10 in track one and we're going to come down to the fourth instance of it and we're going to hold shift and option and then we're going to press edit now that's created phrase 11 Now if we go into phrase 11 by pressing shift and right, we can see it's exactly the same phrase, play it, same, same pattern exactly, it's a clone of 10. Now in this phrase we're going to add an extra phrase on the last step, so we're going to scroll down to F, press edit, so notice the instrument is 0, 0, that's no good, we want 0, 1, so hold edit and right. Now listen to this pattern, got that nice extra bass drum which when it loops gives that lovely uh, feel going back in. Right, I think that's probably enough for this lesson. It's been a very long lesson. So let's go back to our song view. Press play, see what we've got. Listen for the change as it comes to bar four. Did you hear it there? No. The boom is nice, isn't it? Coming up again fairly soon. There we go. And the usual thing, let's save. Save to songs, overwrite, yes. So, 
We've, uh, we've grown it a little bit today from just a kick drum to adding two snare drums. We've got some hi-hats now. We've added a little variation to uh, the, the kick drum and that's uh, on that phrase 11, which is a clone of 10. Notice how it's a, a clone, it's a, a copy, but it didn't alter 10 because it's a, it copied everything in 10, but then you can change it without altering the original. This instrument is incredibly deep we're literally just scratching the surface at the moment. So that's the end of part two. Uh, in part three, we're going to add much more. We're going to start putting basses in and all kinds of other stuff. So we're just going to play what we've got on the two views on my screen. And as I play it, I'll move around the, the tracks and the phrases and see what's happening. So here we go, here's the song. Look on the, uh, the phrase. There we are. Let's come down to phrase 11 so we can see that. Here's the extra bass drum, extra kick drum. Let's use option, see our snare drum pattern in phrase 20, and our hi-hat patterns in phrase 30, so option and right does that. Let's look at this in the other view, shall we? Snare drum, kick drum. So anyway, thank you for watching and you'll see me in the next video.